In the next three short videos, we're going to talk about some basics of microbial genetics, replication, transcription, and translation. These are sometimes called the central dogma of biology because all cellular life forms have to carry these three things out. Um, if you've studied this before in another class, you're going to see that we are going to really, really simplify this. Big picture is what's most important to me at this point. So in this first video, let's take a look at DNA replication. First of all, we have to understand the context of DNA replication. On the left, you can see binary fission. On the right, you can see an example of mitosis. Um, before a cell divides, if it decides, quote unquote, decides it's time to divide, it needs to make a copy of its entire genome uh, so that both daughter cells have identical, complete sets of all the genes that they need. So DNA replication takes place just prior to cell division. So uh, in these two pictures, it'd be just prior to, uh, on the left, uh, be at step one, just prior to the cell elongating. And on the right, it would be uh, during, um, uh, during interphase before division even takes place with mitosis. Here's the basic idea. <clears throat> you can see here on the left, we've got a, a picture of a DNA double helix and two strands in reverse complementary orientation. You remember how that works. There's a set of proteins that will essentially peel those two strands apart. Do you remember what kinds of bonds hold the two strands together? In other words, what kinds of bonds hold the base pairs themselves together? Why do T and A across from each other stick together? Why does a C and a G across from each other stick together? It's because of hydrogen bonds. And if you remember, hydrogen bonds collectively are strong when they add up, um, but individually they're pretty weak. And so proteins can get in there, specialized proteins can get in there, and uh, we say melt apart the two strands. We can pull apart and break those hydrogen bonds. Once we've opened them up, each strand then becomes a template. It dictates what the new strand is going to uh, is going to look like what sequence the new strand is going to be because on the original parent strand anywhere you have a C the new <coughs> excuse me the new daughter strand gets a G anywhere you have a T the new daughter strand gets an A right the base pairing rules will determine it and therefore the parent strands act as a template for the sequence of the new daughter strand. Uh, the main enzyme involved here is one called DNA polymerase, and as the name implies, it polymerizes DNA nucleotides to form a complete DNA nucleic acid, follows the base pairing rules. The two daughter molecules, in theory, are identical to each other, though we know that at some particular rate, DNA polymerase does make some mistakes, and we call those mutations. And then this is often referred to as semi-conservative. It's because if you look at the two new daughter molecules, they're made up of one strand that was the original and a new strand. So conservative means saving. So semi-conservative means we've saved half uh, of the original molecule and uh, put it into each of the two, uh, let's see, how, what's the best way to say this? In each new daughter molecule, half of it is the original molecule, and half of it is, um, is brand new. So if you look at the, the color coding they've given you between the blue and the gold, hopefully that can kind of clarify that for you. All right, so where does this start? Uh, a bacterial chromosome, if you remember, is typically a circular double-stranded DNA, and it has a sequence on it called an origin of replication. A bacterial chromosome typically only has one origin of replication. And it, the, the proteins are going to open up the sequence at the origin of repl replication. What I mean by open up is they're going to, like we saw in the last figure, melt apart the two strands. And that exposes the single-stranded regions for DNA polymerase and all of its buddies to get in there and begin creating new daughter strands. And it's going to happen in both directions. So if you can picture on the far left here, if you can imagine a double-stranded DNA that's two strands twisted together, and you take those two strands and you start pulling them apart, you're going to have them pulling apart in opposite directions going around the circle. Right? So replication will proceed in both directions. And it happens at these junctions we call replication forks. The replication fork is the spot where the double-stranded DNA is becoming two 
single-stranded DNA strands. <clears throat> now they wrap all the way around the circle until they hit something called a, a terminator sequence. And they're going to hit that terminator sequence, a replication termination sequence, and that's going to cause all the proteins to fall off, and the two identical daughter strands will separate. In eukaryotes, it's a little more complicated. Eukaryotic chromosomes are typically linear, and they're, they often are much, much bigger than a prokaryotic chromosome. And so most eukaryotic chromosomes have multiple origins of replication all down the line. So when it's time to replicate, uh, a set of initiation proteins bind to these origins of replication, open up what we call a replication bubble, and that creates two replication forks. Replication will take place from each of these bubbles in both directions. So if you can imagine these bubbles in the picture here getting larger and larger until they run into each other. The dark blue represents the original uh, uh, parent strand, and the light blue is the new daughter strand that's being produced. So uh, on the top, you've got the beginning as these bubbles are forming. In the middle, you can see these bubbles getting larger and larger as the replication forks are moving towards each other. And at some point, those forks uh, collide, and you end up with two completely separate but identical daughter DNA molecules. Also, semi-conservative. If you look, each new molecule is half dark blue, half light blue, indicating that half of the original molecule is there and the other strand is uh, a new, brand new molecule. So that is DNA replication. I hope you'll study through that a few times and um, see how it lines up with what's in your textbook. And if you have any questions, be sure to let me know.